What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Junkyard here. Obviously, I'm doing a brake job, which kind of made me think about sharing a few things. And the first one that came to mind is in 20 years of doing this job, I just got one of these. And I just did my first two bushings right there. And let me tell you, I should have bought, I don't know how long they've been around, probably forever, but I should have bought one a hell of a lot longer ago. I mean, it's so quick. Put it in the air hammer, buzz them out, rattle the new ones in, easy peasy. Because I know I'm guilty of it. There's been a lot of times I've done a brake job and fought with them and been like, eh, nah, they'll be all right. I'll leave them in there. As easy as this is, you've got no excuse to change them. And in this particular case, one of them had a pretty good little edge war in it and the shoe was running crooked. And so, um, that's one tip. So I'll show that to you again. I don't get shit for endorsing this and I've only got 18 people watching. So it's not like that's going to do me a, a lot of good anyway. But the other thing is it, I only, I try like hell to run bearings made in the USA. This trailer, I don't know what brand they were. Um, I had one bearing failure a little over a year ago. And I, at first I thought I'd just flat screwed up and let it run low on oil while the seal went out. Well, the way the bearing failed, it kind of made me wonder if I had a bearing issue. When I tore into this hub, I did not like the way the bearings were wearing. They were making metal. Um, the company that made the bearings were so proud of them, they didn't put their damn name on them. So I'd like to go back to Trail King, figure out who supplied the axles and go back to them and say, look, this is horse shit. This is a low boy. It ain't like we're running around with 40,000 pounds of steel on there. I'm running around with 80 to 105,000 pounds of steel on it. So, which brings me to my next thing to think about. Some of you guys are aware of this, some are not. They make a bunch of different kinds of friction material on shoes just like they do brake pads on a race car you know you got short track you got medium track you got all that different shit some compounds heat up faster some heat up immediately so like in my racing days if we were running a certain kind of compound we knew the first lap or two it wasn't going to stop like it would at lap five or six because there wasn't any heat in the brakes these are this is, a, I think this is a, a Fleet Pride brand. I've actually had pretty good luck with their stuff lately. Um, the reds are the most aggressive ones. They make them in a 23 and 26,000 pound per axle rating, however they come to that. If you're pulling a skateboard and you only carry around 20 or 25,000 pounds or 30,000 pounds, I would not suggest this shoe because they're gonna be aggressive. They're gonna be hard on drums. But in my case, the lightest I am with 2,500 is 120, 125,000, and I go up to 160 with the IMTs. I want all the brake I can get. Plus, my, my travels are not over the road. You know, we run a 250 mile radius of Joplin, so I'm kind of regional. It's a lot of stop and go, a lot of county roads, and you know, so I'm kind of, I'm not local, but I'm not over the road. So I wear a lot of tires from scrub more than miles. I wear a lot of brakes because there's so much stop and go. When I was over the road, I could go 100,000 miles before I had to adjust my clutch. And now I do it every two, maybe three services. I got to adjust it a little bit. So um, when you're buying shoes, don't just necessarily take what the parts man throws across the counter. Because I've had some certain house brands that were good kind of when I first started using that particular place. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but lately the last few shoe sets I've gotten from them were crap. I either had issues with the friction material coming off the backing plate or they just wouldn't, you'd get them hot once and they were junk. And, and that's where these severe service shoes are good in that you can smoke them a few times and you still have something there. These just kind of line haul over the road, you know, 30 40 dollars a set shoes man you smoke them once they're junk they get hard as a rock and they just won't grip and that ain't worth a shit not not in any situation but especially in a heavy one one experiment i'm doing kind of by necessity here is they only had three web brand drums and three of their house brand drums so we're going to put them 
where I can watch them, and we're just going to see if the 50 bucks difference between the two drums is worth anything. You know, I see some differences in the way they're made, or the way maybe they're balanced. You can see when they balance their house brand drum, you know, they took a big old swath out of it there, and it's fairly deep. I don't know if you can really see that, but, um, but on the web, it just seems to be a little more consistent. Well, not so much on this one. I took a pretty good chunk out of that one, but there's other little things. And, and they say their house brand drums made by web. Maybe the price difference is strictly volume. I don't know. Inquiring minds want to know. So um, I'm not, as far as my seals go, I don't really have a one brand that I prefer over the other. Um, in this case, National is what they had and what I needed. So um, that's what I did. I obviously opted for the Timkins over the other bearings that they had. I just... You know, while my name is not on this, the title of this trailer, this trailer is my trailer. I'm the only one that pulls it, I'm the only one that works on it. So if there's an issue with it, I am the only one to blame. So believe me, I caught a lot of grief when I lost that bearing year before last, but once I figured out what happened, I, I kind of felt a little vindicated um, because I, I keep a close eye on my stuff. So I run it like I own it, which with some people's maybe not a good thing but in my case it's a very good thing the other thing i just noticed something that was worth mentioning this fourth axle it sees almost all of its tire wear in scrub especially when you're heavy most of your weight's kind of up there depending on how you have it shimmed so this this axle especially axle three and four when you turn if you have to make a tight turn they they almost slide sideways like a spread axle trailer so i my tire guy recommended this yokohama it is a my 507 it's an all position it looks fairly aggressive but i'm super impressed with how these are wearing um they've been on there oh a solid year if not longer and they're wearing nice and even and, you know, a year for this truck is probably in the 50 to 60,000 mile range, all heavy, you know, it's all drill rigs. Um, so, you know, granted it doesn't look like a more a, a standard trailer tire tread, but man, they're, they're a high scrub chip resistant and they are doing what they're supposed to. And, and they weren't really any more expensive than, um, in the other tire for that position i was just chewing these tires up like crazy i was lucky to get thirty thousand miles out of a set so we're money ahead by a long shot there um of course they're you know 16 ply and i run my trailer tires you know 115 120 psi but um just thought i'd give you a few little tips um I do like to run Lucas hub oil as opposed to regular gear oil. I think you have less seal failures and I don't think it breaks down as bad when they get hot. Cause you know, summer's coming and um, you know, things get hot enough. You can't touch them, especially having these wheel covers over them. You just don't get as good airflow around the tires and the hubs and everything. So there are trade-offs for everything. But um, one more thing I want to show you that I got yesterday. You know, all that suggestive advertising when you're standing at the parts counter. They had this um, rechargeable work light, magnetic base. Got two different settings, not very different than a flash one. All that does is send you into, I don't know what kind of convulsion it would be, Tourette's or whatever. But um, so far, it's been a handy little deal. I've only used it once, but we'll see how it stands up. So anyway, just thought I'd give you all an update. Maybe this will earn me another subscriber or two. Um, we'll maybe have reviewed a little while down the road on the light and how the brakes and everything are doing. So everybody have a good day. Be nice to everybody else, regardless of affiliation or any other idiosyncrasy they may have. There's too much division in the world right now. So take care, everybody.